could you just uh, still yourselves for a moment? Our Father and our God, we thank you for this moment in history. We thank you for the African-American contractors and all that ACA does to open up opportunities, not just for laborers, not just for the workers, not just for the tradespeople, but for contractors, black contractors, to access opportunities from the city, the county, the state, and even the federal government, as well as local companies in this city. God, we thank you for the vision of Rainbow Push and Reverend Jesse Jackson to open up opportunities to push for economic justice and equity at every level of government, at every level in our society. And as we seek to rebuild our infrastructure, as we seek to rebuild our neighborhoods, we want to make sure that those who live in the neighborhoods have an opportunity to not only uh, be consumers, but, but also to be the persons that rebuild as they did in the Bible and the Old Testament and Nehemiah, to rebuild in the places, the breaches where they live, and to close the gap in the places where they live. And so as we look at these deserts, these housing deserts, as we look at these economic deserts all around the city, all around the state, we ask that you will bless us with partnerships and collaborations that we might rebuild and starting today, connect with each other in ways that we've not connected before. As Reverend Barrow and Reverend Jackson often say, we're not as divided as we are disconnected. So we must connect across racial lines. We must connect across economic lines. We must connect across ability lines. We do not need to import workers. We need to build up the workers that we have in this city. So God, we ask that you will bless this meeting, bless this gathering, bless all of us individually and collectively as we bind ourselves together to move the city, county, state, and all that live in and around it forward. We ask these things in your precious son, Jesus' name, and those of us, those who call you Allah, those who call you Hare Krishna, those who call you the uh, creator, bless us all, one by one, and together. Let every heart say amen, amen. and amen. Let me thank everyone for coming out this morning. But also, let me just say that we're going to be moving pretty quickly because uh, we got two things going on. This meeting, which is our big thing, as well as the uh, broadcast downstairs. But before I do that, let me um, bring up Miss Jamie Reed from the Commissioner of Aviation. She's a good friend. She did well at purchasing. And she's knocking them out and flying over. So give it up for Miss Jamie Reed. So much. Um, well, good morning. Um, I am Jamie Ree. Uh, Dr. Wilson, that was amazing. Thank you for that blessing. Um, I think we all have a lot to be uh, thankful for, um, but we also have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, I'm very proud to serve as the commissioner for the Chicago Department of Aviation and under the leadership of Mayor Johnson, um, the sky's the limit. I'm honored to be in the presence of so many great leaders that shaped the history of Chicago, working their entire careers to create jobs and build generational wealth in some of our most underserved communities. Across our city, the South and West Side's children are our most valuable resource. And as Reverend Jackson said, your children need your presence more than your presence. And from day one, Mayor Johnson has brought that same commitment to children, to the government of this great city, and put that front and center in front of us all. As our mayor said in his inaugural address three months ago, we must all work together to create a Chicago where business, philanthropy, community, labor, they all work together to connect every young person to an opportunity to fulfill their potential. And at O'Hare and Midway, we're focused on taking advantage of one thing, that every child has imagination. We must feed that imagination so that our children can dream, so that the impossible can become the possible. This time in Chicago's history, under this mayor, with the leadership of ACA, Omar, and the entire group, and Reverend Jackson, and Commissioner Kim, uh, I'm sorry, State Rep uh, Dubuque, everything can be possible. So it is a call to action right now for us. If you know someone that's interested in doing the business in the city of Chicago that wants to be at the airport, let me know. We've created a collaboration with city colleges. We have uh, some uh, information at our desk, and I'd just like to acknowledge my team. Tracy Payne, raise your hand. That's our chief administrative officer. <laughs> Renee Neely, 
raise your hand. She does all the workforce and has got kids out there. We're showing them what is possible for their future. Dietaria Towns, raise your hand. Everybody knows Thai in the room. Thai does all of our IGA. And Gigi Godfrey, raise your hand, Gigi. So we, we walk the walk, we talk the talk. We want to know who's out there and who wants to be part of our great family. They've got $8 billion coming up over the next 10 years. There is something for everyone. Whether you want to start off in kitchens and own your own concession one day, whether you want to start in the cleaning and own your own janitorial, whether you want to start as a laborer and end up running a construction company, we've got 10 years of growth and capacity building available for you. There is power in procurement and there is power in our networks. And so what we need to do is spread the word. I want you to please stop by our table, grab a coloring book for those little kids that don't even know that there are airports in this city and let's get them going. Let's start them in preschool. Let's feed them all the way through the pipeline to get them into the, these careers that are emerging over the next 30 years. Also contract opportunities, please. We've spent a lot of time reimagining contracts and that work comes from a lot of the work that, that Reverend Jackson and, and Omar have been doing for a lot of years. So we need to make sure that we're getting the word out about there's an opportunity for everyone and it's a level playing field. I saw that you had that on your sign out there, leveling the playing field. And that's what we have to do. We have to make sure that you have the resources available to succeed. And so with that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me today. It's truly an honor and a blessing and a privilege to serve this great city. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you. For those that I don't know, please stop by and say hello at our table. Thank you. Now, Jamie is for real now, so don't come back here and say she's playing. She's real. But the next uh, individual is going to be our senior vice president of ACCA, going to introduce our ne next two guests, Andre Jones. Give it up, Andre. Good morning. First, we're going to um, bring on State Rep Kimberly DeBucket. The bucklet? I'm, I'm sorry. Huh? Duple? That's Omar's fault. Let me just tell you this. It's not mine. I, you know, women don't like when you mispronounce their name and stuff. Let me be clear. I apologize, but please. One. So, Kimberly, 5th Legislative District, a state rep from Chicago, please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kim Dubu Clay. <laughs> I am the brand new state representative of the 5th Legislative District. Um, I was appointed in May, and my district is actually just west of this. I'm west of King Drive, all the way down to South Shore, and all the way north to River North. So I'm very happy to be here. I have to give a shout out to my former place of employment. I used to be a water reclamation district. So a shout out to the water reclamation district. Um, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm, I'm always happy to support the African American Contractors Association and all that you do to ensure that our firm and our workers have a fair shot at doing business here in Illinois and across the country. Making up 30% of the population, it is paramount that our contractors receive their fair share of contracts from all units of government, the city, the county, the state, and of course federally. Historically, we have faced systematic discrimination and exclusion from economic opportunities, which left us with countless disparities. I commend the association's work to end the inequitable distribution of contract jobs and bidding opportunities. The promotion of fairer, equity-informed contract placement helps everyone reinvigorate communities that are too often overlooked. It also helps the growth of our predominantly black communities, black and brown communities, like this one and others on the south and west sides of Chicago. The vast pool of talent and expertise assembled by your organization is absolutely essential to helping our government become more efficient and responsive to the needs of our citizens. The service that you provide helps us better meet the needs of our community and is indispensable, and I thank you for all that you do. I'd like to talk to you about two programs that are available for grants. The first program is called the Illinois Workers Pre-Apprenticeship Program. This program is, a, is intended to go to community-based organizations to help recruit, pre-screen, and provide pre-apprenticeship skills to help underrepresented populations successfully transition into full program jobs. 
Um, the guarantee, grantees can receive up to $550,000, and the deadline to apply for this grant is August 30th of this year. So that is called the Illinois Workers Pre-Apprenticeship Program. The second program I'd like to highlight is the Energy Transition Navigators Program. This program is intended to provide outreach and recruitment for the CJA. you all remember the CJA, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, Workforce Contractor Program. Um, this program, uh, grantees can receive up to $600,000 in grant money, and a deadline for that is August 15th. So I have business cards here. I can leave them for you if you need help or inf need additional information on how to apply for these grants. M my office and I will be happy to assist. Um, I stand here before you committed to continue to fight for you in Springfield to support all the work that you do on behalf of black community and our black firms. Once again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here and I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Uh, Shanetta from Black Contract United is going to help us out with the raffles because we got to get either way because our sponsor said we must give them away. Go. Got yeah, quite a few. Okay, so I have three people that are going to win. Does everyone have a ticket before I start? Did I give everyone a ticket? No. Who does not have a ticket? It don't cost you nothing to get a ticket. Who does not have a ticket? Raise your hand, please. Okay. Everyone has a ticket. I did a good job. Okay, so um, take your tickets out, please. We're going to start with the first one. The number is Thank you. Our next guest is from the Department of Water Management, Dr. Chin, and um, we're going to ask her to come up. But just so you know, I'll have some comments about the Department of Water Management as well as aviation as we go forward because my concern is still with procurement and equity and the separation of them and some things that are going on there. I think aviation has about uh, $22 billion in opportunity, contract opportunities. I don't know if that was mentioned by her at this point. Huh? Eight billion? Okay, just eight. Over the 10 year period? Okay, I thought it was 22 billion. And, uh, with Department of Water Management, I'm going to bring up Dr. Ching, but also we need to really focus on this as black contractors because opportunities are there, but we're not getting them. So I'll speak more about that a little later, but please welcome Dr. Andrea Ching. Good morning. Oh, I'm too close. There we go. Uh, thank you all so much for having us here today. Uh, I'm Dr. Andrea Chang. I'm commissioner for the Department, City of Chicago Department of Water Management. 
Uh, I'm here today with uh, Angel Hawthorne, our Director of Public Affairs, and Deputy Commissioner Will Tabidi, uh, and um, we are just very excited to be here today. We absolutely have a lot of contracting going on that we are very excited about. Um, you know, our department, of course, is in charge of both water and sewer. Uh, we take all that clean water from the lake, run it through two of the world's largest water purification plants, get it through 4,300 miles of water main into people's homes, and then collect the dirty water plus the storm water through 4,600 miles of sewer main to our friends at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District for wastewater treatment. So it's a huge system. It has to be maintained. And now we have lead service line replacement on top of it. So it's, it's just so much work. Um, it's actually, you know, the, the lead service line replacement part of it alone is eight billion, with a B, dollars worth of work. Eight billion do dollars worth of work over the next 50 years. And we really, uh, we want black, black entrepreneurs and companies to benefit from this work. Um, promote black employment. You know, we've gotten a little bit so far, but not nearly where we need to be. Uh, we want to make sure we're getting the word out, figuring out what any obstacles are, so we can understand and learn and improve. Um, we've tried in the last couple of years, we've only done a couple of uh, lead service line related contracts so far. We have a lot more to go. Um, but in what we've done so far is, um, you know, trying to make the scope smaller, trying to you know, allow that to provide accessibility to smaller companies, to minority-based companies, um, being creative in standalone projects. So one of the things, for example, we want to do this next year is have a block of just lead service line replacement. Don't do the water main, do, do, don't do the sewer main, just lead service line replacement on just one block. Really try and focus in, get people experienced doing this work so we can grow some of the smaller companies and have them be primes on the bigger projects. Um, that also involves lowering insurance requirements, um, performance bonds, things like that, so things become more accessible. Because um, a lot of these projects traditionally have been just huge mega projects that become inaccessible for any smaller companies. Um, you know, the reality is that our, some of the work that we do is very specialized. We have 17 different unions in our department. We do all sorts of things, but there's, there's room for everyone, and we really want to grow that. If you look um, by our table here, where Angel is, uh, we have a listing of all the different contracting opportunities we have coming up just in the next six to nine months. There are 70 of them, seven zero. Um, so a lot of opportunity in there, and that even doesn't, we've, got, we've had a few additions even since that was put together. Um, you know, we really want to build a directory of companies like yours. Uh, so that, you know, please leave your card with Angel, with myself. Um, we're here with Will. We're here to kind of talk about this, understand what impediments you see uh, to participating in these projects. Um, so, you know, with Mr. Omar's support, we'd like to convene uh, a roundtable from here to hear from everybody directly. Uh, we're thinking maybe having a tour of our uh, water treatment plant and, and having a roundtable at the same time, uh, just so people can kind of get in, see what the water treatment plants look like, our pumping stations, get to know us a little better. Um, and we hope that you all will sign up to receive the solicitations from the Department of Procurement Services as we contract things out team up with each other uh, so that we can have bids from your companies to consider. Uh, we're also going to try and open up um, an actual lead service line replacement location for people to come and visit, see our in-house crews, um, what they're doing. What does an actual lead service line replacement look like in the city of Chicago? Because it does vary by city. Um, and you know, I, I'm an engineer by trade, um, so you know, this is the kind of stuff I really enjoy. I, I enjoy the technical aspect of this. I enjoy the, the construction aspect of this. Um, but we have a lot to do, and so I'm actually going to have Will Tavidi come up and just talk a little bit more about his firsthand experience with some of our projects. Good morning. Um, yes, as uh, she said, I am uh, the deputy commissioner of you know construction, basically. So of the 2,000 employees, 1,200 fall underneath me. So I understand the workforce that is needed for this type of project. And for a little bit of context too, I'm as well an engineer and uh, started with the water department about 11, 12 years ago as a lowly guy in the trench, just making sure that the quantities made sense and everything was you know, doing you know, up to standard and uh, you know, worked my butt off and showed up and eventually it was you know, realized by 
the water department, hey, this guy's an asset. This guy knows what he's talking about, you know, and uh, yeah, I proved myself to become a deputy engineer or a, a deputy commissioner and I, you know, still care about the city that I live in here and I do see that there is ample amount of opportunity for everybody to get a piece of the pie. And when I'm saying that now, I'm an example of, hey, even you lowly contractor, hey, you, the person that is isolated, you can work out in the system and be homegrown talent and you can actually be productive and have, you know, an amazing growing company. And that's where, hey, I see that, I want that to be spread out to not only the engineers, it has to be the contractors, it gotta be all the people. I want, you know, Chicago to, Chicago's construction to be reflective of the communities that are out there. So I don't want anybody outside coming in and taking our type of opportunities. This is us, we, you know, we cultivate it, and we should keep it in house. So with that being said, there are multiple, Jobs out there that we currently have going on, one block level, where we do water main, and we do you know, sewer main, and we do lead service line you know, replacement. And like she says, there's more inventory than we have people to actually do it. So that's where we need to, you know, we're open to you know, having more black plumbers, black contractors, people here to make sure that, hey, I want you know, the crews to be emblematic, like I said, of the diversity that we have right now. And you know, it, it doesn't, you know, it's, and that's why we're here to make sure that the message is getting out, basically. So, we know we're we're here to listen, and we want to grow, and we want you guys to grow with us. So, um, yeah, we we have approximately six miles of water main and about four miles of sewer main that we're going to complete by this year, and that number is only going to grow. And like every day, this is a system of four thousand miles of you know all of this infrastructure is constantly breaking, constantly needs to get updated, and we want you guys to be a part of that as well. So. Um, yeah, that's about all I got, and thank you for you know giving me your time. All right, so I have two more people. Um, let's see, six zero seven, seven seven one six. No, no one has that. Six zero seven, seven seven one six. You have it? Come on, cameraman. Okay. So we have one more. So we have one more. 607-7726. Let's go. That, isn't that the plumber? Give me some work. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Okay, I got it. All right, we're getting ready to bring Miss Lisa Gilbert up. Uh, she's a good friend. She's the advocate in the uh, purchasing department where Jamie came from, and her and her team is doing a great job. And let's give it up for Miss Lisa Gilbert. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Lisa, uh, Gilbert was my previous married name. My name is Lisa Freelon. <laughs> I, um, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I am Deputy Procurement Officer over Community Engagement and Intergovernmental Affairs for the city's um, Department of Procurement Services. The Department of Procurement Services is basically the contracting authority for the city of Chicago. So like 90, over 90% 90 of all the contracts come through our department. We also handle certification, so vendors looking to get certified, whether MBE, WBE, VBE, we do it all, that's our department. And we also handle contract, to comp contract compliance to ensure that contractors are adhering to their compliance goals. Uh, we also have a number of various workshops. We know a lot of vendors are interested in doing business with the city. We host workshops talking about how to do that, how to get certified. We know the certification process can be a little cumbersome for some, but we do have workshops and we can have one-on-one um, -on -one conversations with people in our department to talk you through that certification process. Um, we, um, we recently had uh, issued our buying plan. Our buying plan is our 15-month forecast on all upcoming contracting opportunities. It's not just the city of Chicago, it's also including Cook County, the state of Illinois, and all of our sister agencies. So I tell people if you're looking to do business with the city and you're trying to understand, know what's 
upcoming. This is the book you need. I'm out of them. You guys came and got them. I appreciate that. But I do have QR codes that take that's a link to this book. Um, also, if you're interested in current opportunities, you can sign up for what we call DPS alerts. It's our weekly um, email blast to people that are registered that talks about any events and or contracting opportunities that are coming out that week. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me. Um, again, Lisa Freeline, I can give you my number. I have cards, but feel free to come see me. Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget that last name, Freeline. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you to come to your feet and give our leader, our friend, our freedom fighter, Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson, a round of applause that he come to speak to us. Give it up for Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson. Thank you for coming here today. Please be seated. Broadcast us momentarily. We'll go down there in your seats. Because we need the spirit to drive us forward. We live in our faith, we live under the law. See, we live in our faith. Live in our faith. Live in our faith. Under, the, under the law. So what it is that we must use our faith for the unjust law. That's where picketing come in. That's where protests come in. The faith must fight on just law. We're going to our meeting up here every Saturday morning and look, look at the buildings that should be built by us. Look at uh, the trade schools. So I use them, I mean, taking them to court. I mean, the streets that we, we will build, get, get our certificates to build. We will build. Our certification to build. Certification to build. And there's no reason to lock people out of the process. It doesn't make good sense. Not fair. So I want us to uh, go to the meeting right now, if you don't mind. Yeah. When the meeting's over, we can meet up here again for a minute. Mm -hmm. I'll tap a few things down. We live in our faith. Live in the law. We just shout and jump and hop and skip. You know, in front of the law, and you get to shout, and the law is not moved. The law is unjust. Like our building where we live, it's unjust law. People of faith must fight the law. We fight the real law, and for the real law. It's not a matter of black and white, it's a matter of wrong and right. People who care, people who care, must be allies. Must be allies. Must be allies. Must be allies. People who care. Must be allies. So welcome, 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 we're in there's too much violence, and, and violence does not stop on one side of the town. We stop the violence to save our families. Our kids must go to school together, must learn to function together. It's our duty, right? Let me express my thanks to you for coming here today. Please go to all the services right now, if you don't mind. And uh, see you next Saturday, right? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Where's Laverne? Laverne. Laverne is all the way in the back, bro. She's running out the door. <laughs> <laughs> She's in charge of the ship. Give Laverne a big hand. So, it's we will come up and the broadcast over. Okay. Broadcast, we're on, that, we're on the air right there. All right, let's give it up for Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson. Give it up for him. 
All right, but let me, uh, let me just quickly uh, bring uh, Pepper Construction up. Michael Stenlin, he's been a friend, an advocate for helping the minority contractors, helping people that need coats in the wintertime and just been doing some great things at that company. And I enjoy talking with them, just dealing with the landscape of what's going on. But let's give it up for our friend, Senior Vice President Michael Stenlin. Thanks, Omar. Uh, it's good to be back here and invited back again. We've, we were here a number of years, and but for today, I'm just here to talk about an exciting project that we have coming up. Um, everyone's familiar with the Shed Aquarium downtown. Uh, we uh, know Ernest now. We've been in the business together for about over 10 years, and this is our largest 14, and 14. Four, okay, 14 <laughs> times flying by. Um, but this will be our largest and most complicated project. Uh, the Shed Aquarium uh, won't has to be renovated, the whole thing, except for the Dolphinarium area. And the client said, but there's a, just be careful because we're never gonna close. So it has to remain open to the public, so it's gonna be about a four-year project. But for everybody in the room today, if I could, I have to ask for a couple favors. Uh, in the back, Bob Dorr, is just raised his hand. He's, he's our, uh, all the field hiring goes through him. So if you're a tradesman looking for a, <laughs> looking for a, a a job, an hourly job, uh, if you could sign that sheet. And uh, if we could also, if there's contractors here, subcontractors, uh, we're going to be talking about what trades we need, if you could also sign those sheets so we can follow up with you. So there's a lot of opportunity for this project and we're really looking forward to it. Um, I think Ernest is going to talk about the project and then after that, Ashley Stapleton is, is a project manager with Pepper and now has moved into a full-time position as Director of Diversity and Inclusion and she'll talk about the, the minority hiring goals for this project. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ernest Brown, president of Brown and Moman, not BMI, <laughs> which some people call us BMI, but we are Brown and Moman, and we are the joint venture partner with Pepper on the uh, Shared Aquarium Project. This is approximately $175 million project. $175 million project, and it's a private project. There's no city funds, there's no state funds, there's no federal funds. It's a private through philanthropy. And at first, the owner did not have goals. Then they decided that they were gonna put in goals of 26 and six. Then Pepper, Brown, and Moman said, no, we're gonna up that to 40 and 10. Now, the way you get on a project like this, I mean, which some of us have, have talked about, and that is, it's a large job. So if you're a plumber and you can't do the project by yourself, joint venture with other plumbers. It's really just that simple, guys. You've got to talk to one another. You've got to join forces with one another to go after these large jobs. And that way you have more control. I'm going to digress just for a second in terms of projects. We're also on the Obama Presidential Center. And there's been a little bit of controversy about that. But that project, there are four African-American contractors that got together and said, we're going to change the paradigm in, in terms of the way construction is done in this city. What we're going to do is we're going to form a joint venture of four African-American contractors. And we're going to interview the large guys. And we're going to choose one of them to work with us. So that's what we did, and we have 51% of that contract. We control that project. Now, that's not talked about too often, so we're trying to promote what you guys need to do is join forces on plumbing, electrical, carpentry, so on and so forth, and you can be involved and control a lot of these large jobs. It's really just that simple. I mean, but anyway, going back to the, uh, the shared aquarium, it is a, approximately a four-year job. It's going to change. For those of you who, who uh, visited uh, the shed in grammar school and high school, you know, we would walk in the front door and you would go everywhere. The owner and the architects have designed it such that you're going to be doing something called wayfinding. It's going to funnel you through the project such that you can see everything by fun being funneled through the, uh, the uh, project. It is, the site area is about 183,000 square feet. The building footprint is 223,000 square feet. 
We're going to add a section to the, uh, to the uh, north um, where people used to go and, and listen to music. We're going to add about 1,300 square feet. There's going to be a new entry pavilion. There's going to be the North Terrace that I spoke about just a few seconds ago. It's going to be done in four phases and over the next four years. So it is going to be a massive project. And every trade is going to be involved. But the massive part of it is going to be the plumbing. So what we did was we went out and we didn't get a, a, a big uh, uh, number of plumbers so we have chosen some African-American plumbers to work with us. And what we're doing is we're keeping tabs on not just minority, but African-American participation. I'm going to say that again. We're keeping numbers on African-American participation, and we're promoting joint ventures between African-Americans and non-African-Americans. That's important. And, and we're doing that because organizations like PUSH and our elected officials have been asking for that sort of thing to be done. So that's what we're, we're doing. We need every trade, as I stated before. So today, sign up with Ashley. Ashley, can you raise your hand? You're back there somewhere. OK, there she is. This is the lady that is going to get it done. She's the Director of Diversity for Pepper, Brown, and Moment. And she has the power. She has the power. So with that, Ashley. So as mentioned, with this being a private project, you know, we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, we at Pepper, we at Brown and Moman, joint venture and just projects in general, we want to make sure that our workforce, our contractors, that's representation of the communities we live in. So we are definitely going to continue to push not only on this project, but moving forward. And like Ernest said, I, I do have some power. Like this is going to be something that is what I push. I'm passionate about it. I'm a black woman. I'm a civil engineer by degree, but I've moved into this role. So it's also knowing, you know, the project management side, knowing what comes into doing business and being a contractor as well. So there's that advantage, you know, being able to step into this role, knowing exactly what it means to get that type of participation on these jobs. So anything I can do, you know, to assist, you know, definitely please reach out to me. I do have some business cards, um, but specifically to the shed, um, at, I don't know if you all can see, but 40% um, minority, we have a, a, a percentage for women, LGBTQ, um, and then veteran owned businesses as well. And for jobs, we are definitely pushing to make sure that again, we are representing our community, so we not only want South Side residents, but we also want West Side residents as well. And we're aiming for 55% hours worked being for minorities. So we really are going to be tracking this. We're going to be making sure that we are making a, a ton of an effort to make sure that these metrics are met and exceeded at all points in time through the project. So. Anything else? So please come by our table. If there's any questions or concerns, please let us know. Thank you. Give it up for Pepper Construction. I was just told, I was just told that they hired someone right here today. Where the at? Right here, Marcus Simmons. Labor, stand up. He, they just hired Marcus. Yes. Let them know. What what union are you in? Local six labor union. Marcus got a job by coming back seeing Reverend Jackson. <laughs> okay, great. He been at all. He been at all the convention. But next one is uh, Jeff Baker, which happened to be a consultant, real estate guru, and he's great in the business. And give it up for Jeff <laughs> Baker. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you very much, and it's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm a rookie uh, with. Uh, 
Atta and Omar. I'm um, very uh, privileged to have been asked to get on board to help him as he develops his new programs from job training to community development. And they really go hand in hand, and what we're trying to do is expand what he's doing with the workforce and bring that into the neighborhoods where we take some of the vacant properties that are typically eyesores, housing for drug activity, fire hazards, you know the program. And uh, through what we're planning to do is to develop those properties and help just the neighborhoods grow, stabilize the communities, as well as use them as job training. So they go together hand in hand. Um, just to give you an idea, I brought a couple of stats of what's going on in some of the areas. Uh, I've taken neighborhoods like the Greater Grand Crossing, uh, Douglas, Chatham, uh, Auburn, Gresham, and Burnside. And just in July alone, there's been uh, 34 homes that have been rehabbed and sold between 300 and 575,000. So there is a market out there. Uh, like all neighborhoods that turn, it goes from speculators to private investors, which is what we're seeing now in a lot of these areas. So there is hope to then the uh, professional rehabber who will come in and see there's a market there and start taking over. And then finally the commercial. So what we're trying to do is jumpstart that, boost that, take it to the next level. And uh, through all the hard work that Omar's been doing and is continuing to do in the communities, this will give us an opportunity to, like I say, help develop the economic starts, which benefits everyone involved. So if there's any way that you would participate in the communities, do some private investment, of course, we'd always appreciate it if you would turn to Omar to look for some of these projects to be uh, tools for job training. That's first and foremost the goal. But again, it's also then to help stabilize these communities and again, build the economic starts. So thank you very much for making me feel welcome today. I think as the pseudo barista, I got to meet a lot of you, uh, but I hope I get to meet everyone someday individually and uh, just thank you very much for having me. Feel very welcome. Give it up for Mr. Jeffrey Baker. But, but let me just say, before we leave out of here today, we want to uh, call off, I got to get these gifts out, I'm going to be in big trouble. So I can't take them home because I don't need it. But uh, the number we have here is 607-7649. So is the last digits. So don't be taking your ink pens out of your markers <laughs> just because I got glasses on. So do we hear anybody? Gone. All right, I'm going to go with the last three digits then to make it life easy. Seven. So which one you have? Okay, you got seven, seven. Okay, I don't want to cheat nobody. So the first one's not yours, right? We know a gambler in the house. Okay, six zero oh, seven 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 one seven. Who got that one? Six zero oh, seven 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 one seven. All right, Scooby Doo ain't got it either. Okay, <laughs> where are you? Okay, I gotta hurry up. Uh, six zero oh, seven 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 three zero. Oh. What they? Take up, I had glue on my finger, but none of the people I gave it to is here. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> six zero oh, seven seven six five seven. Really? Another one in. 607 <laughs> 607-7723. Yep, 607-7723. Here you go. 
this, this, a, this a lady here. Yeah. <laughs> a shrink wrap, whatever. <laughs> Six zero seven seven six six three. Six zero seven seven six six three. One more time. Six zero seven seven six six three. Gone. Six zero seven seven six seven six. What a lottery number. Thank you, ma'am. You know if you can't use this stuff, it's good for a kid for a trunk party. <laughs> so I'll just give you some hints, hints. All right, 607-7718, 607-7718. Uh-uh, Mr. James. I thought that was James. 607-7681. 607-7681. Who got it? Come on, ma'am. See, you guys don't know, I got to do a good job, because this guy got big screens, TVs waiting for me, and big furniture that I did not have nobody bring it in, but I'm just telling you, for real, for real. Thanks to my friend, Doc. 607-7681, 607-7681. Oh, that's the one, okay. So you can come up here again. 607-7722, 607-7727. Maggie, don't be doing nothing. I know you deal with them slot machines. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come on, Maggie. Maggie, I'm going to give you uh, I got one all the way down to my friend. Now, I don't know what's in this box, but I just know it's pretty. Maggie is one super business lady out there in that South Suburban area. You know every mayor out there. 607-7654. 607-7654. Dennis, if you're looking for Jamie, she's downstairs. 607-7654. Anybody feel lucky? 607-7705. What do they do, eat the tickets? 607 607-7644. 607-7727. You got something? All right. Your buddy Bob will take you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. You can handle it. You at LA Fitness. 607-7683. 607-7683. All right. I'm checking the fuck this one. 607-7678. 607-7678. All right, pretty quiet in the room. 607-7696. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Well, you got to go. I want the luggage. 
<laughs> Kobe Straight from St. Louis. He came straight from St. Louis to be with us. We appreciate it. And thank you. Okay, 607-7733. Oh my God. Everybody do that picture. We gotta make something for joy. 607-7704. Oh, 607-7704. Uh-uh. Miss Ben. We actually got a machine for this, but they didn't bring it today, so they got it. It's equilic somewhere. 607-77-735. It's three, yep. 607-7735. I can't do nothing about that. What the hell? All right, nobody have it. I gotta keep it moving. All right. 607-7700. Help me out. 607-7700. Oh! Six zero seven seven six five two. Six zero seven seven six five two. Uh oh, -uh. black man pushing. Hey guys, we're getting ready to get rid of this air condition because I got to go and y'all got to go downstairs to Reverend. He bringing top security up here to get me. 607-7669. This is the air condition. 607-7669. Uh-uh, got the air condition. All right. Thank you, Murph. 607-7670. Oh! oh. <laughs> Boy, you got a little bit of everything with this. Yes, sir. Tea, phone covers, all kind of stuff. Thank you very much. Real nicely great gifted. All right, we got two more. I don't want to give Murphy gift away twice. 607-7656. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh, you have to thank you. Okay, 607-7701. 607-7701. Oh, what? Oh, my. Okay, this is last. I think that's it, people. That's it, and thank you very much. May God bless you. Let's go downstairs to Reverend Jackson Rainbow Porch Coalition meeting. Downstairs in the basement, right down the steps. <laughs>